What's going on internet? IG back again today and Ubuntu Budgie, the little desktop environment that could. Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. Let's check it out. What has it got to offer? So full disclosure here, um, I'm a big fan of the Budgie desktop environment. I first came across it on Solus, and obviously it originates from Solus. There a lot of the there's shared development team going on there. Um, and obviously the other big thing to notice is that Budgie is in the process of being rewritten. They're looking at redeveloping it um, using Qt, Qt, Qt5. Um, Again, don't really know how the acronym goes there because everything's weird in the Linux world. But um, but I am excited about the Budgie desktop environment as a whole. So when the 18.04 LTS release of Ubuntu came out, and obviously the Budgie uh, desktop environment is also alive and kicking well, I thought, I wonder what this one has to offer over something like Solus. But if you want to have the benefits of the Ubuntu uh, ecosystem can we call it that if you want to benefit from what Ubuntu has the reach that Ubuntu has as a Linux distribution um, and you don't want to be dealing with being left out in the cold the package support even though flat pack and snap kind of alleviate any of that um, but if you do want an Ubuntu release and you like budgie desktop and the direction that it's going then this is probably the one to check out so let's jump into a uh, Ubuntu budgie 18.04 Bionic Beaver, and let's see what it has to offer. All right, so here we are inside Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. Now, there are two things that stick out to me whenever I run the Budgie desktop as my desktop environment. And uh, and first of all, it's very, uh, it's very simple. It doesn't try to throw all the features that a desktop environment could possibly throw at you uh, to try and impress you with how cool it is. At the same time, it's very modern. Uh, now what I mean by modern is that it doesn't try to adapt to whatever kind of screen you throw at it. It's not uh, it's not there to uh, to you know morph into a touchscreen device or a two-in-one or anything like that. It and when you trace back the development of Budgie and the purpose purposes behind it, um, the developers are very clear about it being a very desktop centric desktop environment, if that makes sense. So this is made for people who have a mouse and keyboard. It's made for fine pointer. It's uh, it's made for getting out of the way and uh, letting you use your computer in, uh, in the way that makes sense to you. Now, what I will say is, uh, again, I'm ironing out a few kinks here in terms of workflow. Um, and so while this screen recorder is running, for some reason, uh, you get a bit of lag in the window uh, in the window manager. Um, I don't know why that is, but uh, if you see it, bear with it. Um, and uh, when I trust me, when the screen recorder is not working uh, or it's not operating, um, this thing is pretty snappy. I mean, it's still showing relatively snappy performance here and now, but if it just lags occasionally, I don't know, it's probably my computer getting old or something. Anyway, uh, so a bit of background. First of all, this is running inside a virtual machine. Yes, it is running on uh, kind of older hardware. Um, but having said that, Budgie as a desktop environment is actually relatively light on the, on the system resources um, as far as a modern desktop environment goes. We jump in here to the system monitor. Um, again, a lot of this, a lot of Budgie's desktop environment is uh, is GTK based or GNOME based. In fact, the the development uh, is tightly tied to each other. Um, so you can see it's running at about one and a half gigs, which yeah, you know, it's not very, uh, it doesn't seem very light, but I get the feeling it can be minimal if you wanted it to be. Um, so, you know, take it as you will. It is a, definitely a modern desktop environment, so it does need modern hardware. Um, but because of the fact it comes across as very simple and very clean and very modern, um, I appreciate that. And it feels like it's it's pretty snappy in, uh, in real world performance. Now, in terms of the things that are specific to Ubuntu Budgie, if we have a really quick breeze through the release notes here, um, basically a lot of the stuff it comes down to the, the development that's going on for the Budgie desktop environment as a whole. So when, you know, we've always got additions of new widgets and new ways to manipulate windows and shortcuts to organize those windows in terms of tiling them around your desktop. And these are all things where Budgie is basically uh, catching up to feature parity with a lot of the big desktop environments. Again, their focus being desktop users, a lot of this stuff like being able to manipulate windows and being able to um, tile them in specific ways and use hot corners and all that kind of stuff. This is all the sort of stuff that power users on the desktop 
want to have access to. Um, and the other thing that I will mention in, in regards to Ubuntu Budgie specifically is that they have some pretty good um, support for global menus as well. Global menus are the ones kind of like Mac OS where you have the file edit and so on menus up here in the top panel uh, and they're integrated into the top panel instead of the local window. Um, so some distributions do that better than others and it's in fact the basically the only reason while uh, why I am still um, using an Ubuntu based distribution is because uh, Ubuntu's heritage does um, does global menus and thus heads up display menus very very well compared to others um, so again I mean I could read through a lot of the a lot of the changes here that they've made which is fantastic but honestly um, it, what it all boils down to is a much more refined and uh, and giving a lot more uh, options for the power user to make use of their desktop, but at the same time not overcomplicating things to the point where you feel like you're completely lost and your desktop is taking over. And I guess when uh, when I sat down to do this video, as opposed to the the last one I did, which was Ubuntu uh, Mate Mate. Uh, 18.04 the the mate desktop environment is um, is great I love it um, but because of the fact it is uh, it's it's a fork of an older project um, in order to stay updated and stay relevant they have to uh, add new features into an already arguably relatively complete desktop environment now what that leads to is is a fair bit of uh, competing paradigms in in terms of user experience and, and user interface design because budgie is is inheriting a very very simple project like gnome which some would argue is almost too simple these days um, but because they're inheriting that as their as their starting point they can be very simple and then gradually add features that are still very focused to what this particular audience would appreciate uh, in terms of desktop usability and being able to uh, you know use all the modern tools and tricks that um, we've come to expect from modern operating systems but at the same time not have any of the confusion or the where do I find this uh, setting kind of uh, kind of issues that you can run into in in some of the bigger, older, more well-established desktop environments like KDE and uh, and Mate. Um, so, and I keep flip-flopping on the pronunciation of Mate, so you'll just have to excuse me. It's whatever. Um, but what I will say is that uh, in in my experience using Budgie. Um, and I said it at the top of the video that it started out using using it on Solus, which is where I believe the project originates. Um, but having said that, the, it's great to see the collaboration between that team the, and the Budgie team and the Ubuntu Budgie uh, remix. Because uh, honestly, there are a lot of people out there who depend on an Ubuntu code base uh, to be able to you know run what they need to run and get the support for the software that, uh, that they run. Um, but to be able to benefit from the work, the excellent work that the Budgie team are doing, um, it's it's very exciting stuff. And especially considering, in fact, I'll chuck a link in the cards, um, and you can go check out an earlier review of Budgie before, uh, I think it was around 2015, 2016, somewhere in there, and you can just see the amount of uh, improvements and work that they've done uh, to, yeah, to really polish up what Budgie is capable of. Now, okay, so really specific to the defaults of Ubuntu Budgie, along the top here you've got caffeine, which keeps uh, your computer from going to sleep if you're doing something specific um, and you don't want it to go to sleep, so that's a help, uh, helpful little uh, tip there. Um, you've got obviously Network Manager, you've got Quick Notes, which is a new addition, just a quick and easy place to jot something down. You've got Night Light, which is, you know, that very trendy uh, red light filter. Um, then you've got your Places menu, and you've got your standard Budgie menu stuff. Now on the sidebar here, you've got your options for applets. And again, you can kind of chuck your own custom things in here. You can jump into settings, and you can decide what you want to stick in those applets. Uh, and obviously you can also change what order the different items on the panel uh, and some of the applets show up. You can change what side of the screen the panel's on and all that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, this is all kind of relatively, uh, I guess, basic stuff, but at the same time, it allows you to, a level of customization in Budgie um, that is gradually getting better. Because like I said, um, back in the day, uh, Budgie is a very simple and focused desktop, and the, the downside to that is that you don't get a lot of options to be able to customize it to the to the nth degree like you would with maybe some of the more mature ones, KDE, Mate, uh, XFC, so on. Um, but having said that,
You got your notification menu here on the side and you can clear all the notifications if you don't want to see anything here. Um, and while I haven't extensively tested uh, what notifications come through to the center or what it drives the, the kind of the background processes for that, um, I'd be interested to see, let me know in the comments below how much of notifications from different apps uh, in, the, in the Linux world show up in that uh, in that list there and the other the other thing that I will mention is it would be great to see uh, a project like the software boutique on the mate or mate version of uh, Ubuntu show up here in Budgie just because um, honestly yeah I'm not a great fan of uh, of the way that this uh, software center is laid out I mean it's it's a bit more responsive than the last one but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not a fan. It's, it's quite uh, cluttered. It's pretty overwhelming. Anyway, that, that's a criticism of Ubuntu as a, as a whole, I, I suppose. Not so much a, a budgie. Anyway, in terms of answering the question, would I run this particular uh, OS? So, uh, I still have very mixed feelings about uh, Ubuntu as, as an operating system. I'm not quite sure if it's uh, as technologically advanced or or as relevant as what it once was. Um, I think there are distributions out there today which are doing a better job of providing up-to-date software that is also stable, um, whereas I feel like Ubuntu's in this weird space where it's kind of neither. Um, I will say that, that Budgie's been very stable while I've been playing around with it, as has uh, Ubuntu Mate, which I'm, I only keep referring to it because I am running it as, as the host uh, operating system at the moment, and I am enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, uh, but would I switch to Budgie in the Ubuntu section? Probably not. Um, and a lot of it boils down to uh, a lot. Of, a lot of it boils down to the, the heads-up display menu. I know that sounds very uh, superficial, um, but I am a big fan of the Budgie project. Whether or not um, I run it as my as my go-to desktop environment, I think I am uh, one release away of doing so. Um, I love where it's going. I love the direction that it's going. Um, and if you've got modern hardware and you want to have a very simple, refined, focused desktop environment, I would say Budgie is right up there with the absolute best of the best. Um, in terms of design, you would get a little bit more pizzazz from the elementary team in the Pantheon desktop environment that, uh, that they keep refining. But, um, but if you want something that is very functional and utilitarian and focused now, uh, then Ubuntu Budgie is, is the place to be. Um, I would say between uh, Ubuntu Budgie and Ubuntu Mate, they, those two, in my opinion, are the releases to beat in this release cycle. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the, the sum of my thoughts at this stage. Um, I'd be interested to do a little bit more testing with this. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments below, whether I should do a comparison of these or maybe a comparison between this and Solus. Um, and also, obviously, Linux Mint 19 just dropped, so we're going to be looking at that very shortly. So definitely um, leave a comment down below, chuck a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and uh, subscribe for that Linux Mint 19 review, uh, and uh, some other crazy news coming your way very soon. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.